Hey guys, this is a PSU for my upcoming build. It's pretty ugly, so let's make it prettier. Before we do that, I just want to say that this process will include disassembling our power supply, which not only will void your warranty, but comes with a huge risk of electric shock. Don't do this mod if you don't know what you're doing. This is an FSP Mini ITX 300 watt power supply. I bought this because it's got power factor correction and is 80 plus bronze rated amidst its looks and used condition. Some advice, never cheap out on your power supply. There's nothing more heartbreaking than your best build up in smoke because you chose a dodgy no-name PSU. Uh, which means I'm low-key taking a chance on this one. Uh, but it's for entertainment purposes only. The mods we'll be doing are sleeving those cables, spray painting the case black, and soldering a 6-pin in replacement of those Molex connectors. Sleeving really helps in cable management, aesthetics, and airflow, but can be a daunting task. You'll need sleeving and heat shrinks of various sizes, and a special set of tools needed to remove those connectors. My own set was still in transit, so I had to fashion one out of a kitchen knife. Uh, sorry, Mum. If you're a beginner like me, it's best to start small, like a fan. These four pin connectors are easy to remove, just Push the hook down with something sharp and pull out the cable. Next, cut your sleeving to the correct length, making sure to cinch both ends with a lighter and feed it through. Using tape may help with the process. Heat shrink will seal each side in place. Make sure you leave enough space though so that you could reconnect those pins. Uh, okay, I struggled a bit, but what can go wrong? My first go is the CPU 4 pin. ATX connectors have hooks on both sides which needed to be pushed in. Some connectors are pretty stubborn and need a good budging, just like this one. Before fitting the sleeve, there are cable ties that need removing. Since they are bound tight, the best way is to use a knife and cut towards the head, just avoiding the cables. Trust me, it'll be okay. You don't have to disassemble the PSU case, but it helps with sleeving and we'll be painting it anyway. I left mine unplugged for a few days before disassembly, but make sure those high voltage capacitors are properly discharged. After removing most screws, we find out that this unit had been used quite a bit. Not very comforting. But anyways, let's desolder and unscrew any wiring that's in the way. Lovely. Back to sleeving. You can now feed the sleeving in the same manner as the fan, but I figured not to use the heat shrink on the PSU side, only using one on the connector side. Turning to the housing, let's prepare it for painting. First, remove all stickers, especially that 80 plus bronze, wipe all surfaces with isopropyl alcohol, and get to painting. But don't forget to cover where the case is grounded. I've chosen chalkboard spray paint as I found this to form a tough matte surface, but really, the limit here is your heart's desire. Straight SATA power connectors are pretty easy to remove. Just lift those latches and they can be pulled out. Just be careful when fitting them back. I think it's easy to overlook which side do the cables go in order. This is where double checking online helps. I don't think you'd really want to see a hard drive up in smoke. Replacing a Molex cable with a PCIe 6 pin sounds like a hack job. And it kind of is. It should be fine as long as your PSU has enough headroom for your build and that they're soldered in the right pinout. And with a spare 6 pin connector, let's solder this in place.
angled SATA power connections are weird. After prying off the cover, we find out that they don't use pins, instead have sharp grooves which cut through the insulation and make electrical contact. Just pull these out by force. And fitting these are as simple as pushing in the cables. Now for the main event, the ATX connector. I thought my 4-pin was painful to remove, now it's multiplied 6 times. I had to stop for a while since I actually got cuts just from pulling these. One thing I hadn't anticipated was removing the Molex 4-pin connector. You need a small tube of some sort, but a paperclip works, if you have enough patience. In this particular case, there's this floppy disk connector, which I doubt I will use, so cutting this off will make for cleaner cabling. The housing's now dry. Let's fit this in. Start with removing the tape covering its grounding. Work out in your head how it's assembled and just go for it. Bits of paint will be scraped off, but I wouldn't worry about it too much. It's DIY after all. Oh yeah, and there's this plastic cover so that the PCB doesn't short circuit with the case. Please don't forget to put this on. Make sure to place the original stickers for reference. And just look at it. Gone are those ketchup mustard cable tied wires and the OEM look of a silver case. But of course you can make any PSU pretty but if it doesn't work or it blows up your build then what is the point really so we have to test it out. Okay so before we plug this into our PC and you know not knowing whether it'll take down any parts or not let's test this PSU, you know, see if we've wired anything correctly. So I got this plugged in and a good way to test this without a PC is, um, well, from a tip that I got from my friend. He's got a YouTube channel. It's Rob's PC City. You should check him out. So on the um, ATX uh, pin, there's a green wire. Hello. Ooh, my thermal pad's being delivered. And okay, so green wire, and just plug this to any of the black wires, which is ground. So, um, just bring this in here, and let's turn it on. And no sparks. All right, so that's good. Okay, so I think I got everything wired up. I'm using the weaker of my two graphics cards that require a six pin, in case I, well, <laughs> blow it. And uh, yeah, I think that's everything so the switch well not just that switch but this switch as well so let's turn it on okay so it has an orange light and um let's just power it on oh yeah <laughs> i forgot this and well not just that but a mini hdmi actually because the gtx 650 has a mini HDMI port. Okay. Yay! 
And yes, it does say system fan failure. So let's uh, press continue. And well, yeah, it <laughs> works. Nevertheless, that's my video on making an OEM PSU look pretty. Do I recommend it? Eh, not really. Power supplies should not be skimped on if you're building a PC. A reputable unit will set you back a minimum of £40, $50, and not only they'd be black and have sleeve cables, but will have peripherals and a lot of headroom for a graphics card. It also includes warranty, and you don't have to disassemble anything. But really, I did this because I thought it would be fun, which it was, but was also unexpectedly demanding and possibly dangerous. Uh, but anyways, if you want to sleeve your own cables or make your own ugly OEM PSU look pretty, then I hope this video helps. But anyways, this is the budding engineer. Thanks for watching, and thanks for the 50 subs, guys. See you soon.